Why on earth are there chickens running around a petrol station? I wasn't expecting to see that today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dom, and welcome to my workshop. Good morning. Thank you for joining me again for another video. This is a Ranala update, and this is a good one. By the end of this video, I really hope to be leaving the foundry with my very own cast iron lower cradle. I've come all the way out to the east coast of England to East Coast Castings to see Chris. He has been helping me and looking after me for this whole journey of making the pattern. I've got my wooden pattern. I've got my original. We're gonna drop it off with him. We've got a fair few bits to clear up here. It seems like a lot of the audience are casting professionals. I've done a lot of homework and a lot of research and a lot of talking with Chris here at East Coast Castings about this pattern. I know that this won't work like that, but I'm, I've never assumed that that is it finished and it's ready to cast. I'm dropping it off today to Chris to give to him so he can do the final fettling with the draft angles, the little fillets in the corners. He's gonna do all the final finishing. But don't worry, everyone out there that sent me all those messages saying I've done it all wrong. I haven't, it's all in hand. <laughs> Chris will sort us out. It is like stepping back in time. It really, honestly, it really is. Obviously, aluminium melting down in there. Jaguar 3.8. Wow. Just come back from heat treatment. Is that an original one, or that's you've done it? One with cars. You haven't got the original Ranala ones in here, have you? No, no, no. <laughs> they would have been somewhere like this though, wouldn't they? Correct. Back in the 30s, That's there would it. have been a foundry somewhere That's that had a room like this yeah. with my original pattern in it somewhere. That's it. And then what, the foundry goes bust and they just That's put all this it. in the skip. Destroyed. All of it just gets burned. It's a shame. So are these all clients? Yep. You just have to keep them. We've got, got, got over, over 4,000 4, different customers. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> so the casting, as you can see. The red bit is what's gonna be correct. iron or whatever. That's it. Yeah. And then these sections here, all the black, is a core box. So you'll have certain core boxes to certain size to fit in a certain pan. I feel like I'd be missing out if I didn't paint mine red now. No, well, They're all red. <laughs> is it special paint, the red? It is, it is proper foundry paint. Is it? it yeah. Is, yeah. This is a, a body, so again, Red section is what the actual casting is. Yep. Split pattern. Yep. Locating pins again so right. it fits together nice. So to make the internals, we have a core box. So basically, we will fill that with sand as one. The sand will go hard. Yeah. When you take it out, that will re relieve that shape to sit inside there. So that's what locates so it doesn't float in the middle, Correct. they're holding it in. Yeah. So the resin, the sand and the resin goes hard enough to support its own yeah. weight. And then when the when the metal goes round it, it, because of the heat, it makes it all break down very easy. So when you knock it all out, it all comes out and leaves that hole inside. Right. The Oh, look at all this. Hey, feel how hard that is. So that is the core, bot, like, well, what would you call it, a core? That's a core. That's a core for a pattern. But that will be, once you've cast the part, that will be destroyed. That's it, the, the metal will go all over that, so that will give that void inside that drop. So I'm actually holding the uh, inside of space. <laughs> how mad, that's cool. Hello, hello. Back in the workshop. Isn't Chris amazing? 
honestly. And I don't know how much he's going to come across because I was there on my own filming, dropping off the pattern. Uh, so I was, there was just me frantically running around with my camera, kind of taking it all in. But I hope uh, Dan manages to edit it all to make some kind of sense. Chris has had the patent for a week and he's just texted me some pictures, it's finished. He is gonna start preparing the core castings and um, basically getting things ready. We're gonna go up there Thursday. And my next phone call is gonna be to Dan. I hope that Dan will be able to come down Thursday. So myself, Dan, and then we'll go and see Chris at the foundry. At the end of this video, we will have a first piece cast for the new run of wheeling machines and that lower cradle i am convinced after seeing these pictures of the pattern it's looking promising and they are they're going to be good they're going to be good i can't wait chris is such a genius in the meantime i've got to wait till thursday i need to occupy myself somehow <laughs> basically the paint is pretty much stripped now it's looking good it's really nice and clean but there is one last thing that i need to do for partly for for the pattern making but also partly for the engineer over the road that's going to be making all the turn parts so that part goes inside to the casting and you can see it's set in there with lead so this is the cast iron this is a turned on a turn on a lathe piece of steel and then that little bulgy bit there is lead and you can see it on the back as well See, so this is the cast section, and then that void there is lead. Same for all of, the all of these pieces that are inserted in to the body. This is the cast piece. That inside set there is the turned piece of steel on the lathe that's threaded, and then that bulgy bit is lead again. That does leave me with some problems because the pieces that are made out of steel that are turned on the lathe inside, I need to know what they look like. I also need to know what the inside of the casting looks like, whether that hole is tapered or whether it's, you know, it might have a barb in the middle of it, might have a T-section sticking out, might have a little step in it to stop these inset pieces coming out. Like it is now, I've got no way of telling and I would be guessing. So this is a very stressful, <laughs> very stressful part, but I'm going to have to now melt these pieces of lead and remove those inserts so I know exactly what I've got. That is going to ruin, well potentially ruin this wheeling machine, it will mean I won't be able to use it. Uh, and, this, and knowing how rare they are and how old and precious they are, I really really don't want to ruin it. This is why I've been putting it off for about two or three weeks now. My goal on this whole project is to make these new Ranellas exactly the same, as close as I can to the original. And I've, at the moment, I've got no way of knowing what is happening inside there. There's no x-raying or scanning or anything like that that's gonna tell me exactly what's happening in there. So I'm gonna have to bite the bullet, fire up my oxycetylene set and try and melt the lead and remove these inserts. I'm very aware heating up and melting lead is not good for you. So. I'm going to get as much ventilation as I can. I'm going to have a mask, goggles, all the other gear on. So do not worry about me. I am being safe. Wow, oh my God. <laughs> that was dramatic, wasn't it? My goodness. It's out, that's the first piece. There is no going back now. First bit has been removed. I have learned two things by doing this. What the inside of the casting looks like in there. It's not just a straight hole, which is really, really interesting and essential. And I'm so glad that I did it now because when it comes to casting these new ones, I can make sure that that inside there is exactly the same as these beautiful old originals. I've also learned, so there was this, bearing in mind, this first piece that I've taken out was, uh, it's a threaded adjuster. So you can see in there, that's threaded. So this is essentially the nut. So as you wind the bottom wheel up to adjust the wheel up, this is the nut that it's turning in. So I was kind of thinking all I could see was that on the top. 
So what is stopping that from spinning in the lead? Like this is just a smooth, it's just a smooth piece of metal like that. And look what it is. I love how simple that is. It's just brilliant. All they've done is weld on little arrows all the way around and they give it enough of, of a purchase to the lead. Once the lead is poured in and set around those, it can't move either way because the arrows go in both directions. So that sort of tapered, that, they create that kind of tapered like wedge almost. So of course, I don't think I need to say by now that when I remake my new one, I will be adding my own little arrows. <laughs> I was half expecting the maker's initials or something to be welded on there. But yeah, how cool is that? We've also created a beautiful piece of art. Maybe I'll call this uh, Ranala One. <laughs> you could see that in the Saatchi, couldn't you? The way it melted, went all of a sudden, bang, molten. Makes me think it was lead. As soon as it got to the temperature, it was gone and it was just molten and it wasn't that hot, really. It really, really wasn't that hot. We're on to a winner here and I've just got two more pieces to do. That one is now empty. This is the next victim and you can see this is the metal insert. This is the cast piece and this shiny thing with all the holes in it around it is the piece of lead. This has been loose in the past and so you can tell someone has gone at it with like a punch and a hammer to try and flare up and mushroom up and expand the top piece of lead to try and hold it back. So it's obviously been worked its way loose over time. So that is why I'm not too sad about melting the lead in this one because really it needs resetting anyway because it's, it's, it's loose. been a week since I dropped off the pattern to Chris. I'm back now at East Coast Casting to see what he has done to it. And I'm a bit nervous. I think it's gonna look quite different uh, after speaking to him and learning all about these core boxes. So I'm gonna go and find him now and see if he can explain exactly what he's done. Hello, Hello. how are you? Chris, how's it going? Right, pattern equipment. That looks completely different. So it's a how it's in two pieces now. So a split pan, obviously colours red, obviously the casting, and then the black is the core print to give you the way through. So the which way is that gonna sit in the in So you'll have your split in the pack when we mould it, you'll have that, like yeah, that. that flat down, obviously make one section, yeah, one set reverse, this goes on top. Like so yeah, and then obviously we'll Split that once that's all sanded together. The, the black is the negative space. Correct. The red will end up being casting. The actual casting is metal. It. Yeah. And then the, the black is a, so this part is a mold. That's correct, yeah, which will give you that recess through as to your original going through that section. That's that, that to give that void there. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have to explain a core box. Right. So basically, split core box again, but when we ram that up, the two halves go together. So we'll fill that with sand, which will obviously go off, uh, and then nice. split that. And then as you come out, similar sort of process, you'll have a shape, which are the two shapes, be a solid shape. So that is basically, my God, this is a bit baffling. Yeah. This is a negative space correct. to make a positive of the negative correct. space. That's correct. <laughs> and then obviously we'll mould that. So that'll be filled with sand. Correct. And kind of make like a, a, like a Plug, cool. Yeah, a lot of plug. Basically, like a plug. That's yeah. that shape. Yep. The sand that will be gone at the That's end. That's it. Okay. And that goes inside there. So yeah. you've got machine allowance all around it, so you should all be fine. And obviously the slots, which we didn't realise until we saw it. You have to fill those in. They are yeah. machined in afterwards. That's in machined afterwards. Correct. Now, obviously you've got your face on there, so you've got machine in all on the faces that you need to. This should give us. <laughs> should. 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 should, should. An should. exact replica. Well, close enough. Yeah to the original, dimensionally, it yeah. should be perfect. That's ready to go in the sand. Correct. This 
is the sand pattern. So it's all starting to make sense now. This original pattern has been split in half. So then you can lay each half in and then the core box is a mold to make solid of the negative space. And then it sh shoots out past, which kind of creates the tabs to locate it. So it's all about making sure everything lines up and fits and both halves come together nice and evenly. So that core drops in the mold, sits perfectly in there. And then that goes on top. The other half of the box goes on top, got the two locators. So the metal goes through the hole in the top box, through in that, down in the runners, into there, that surrounds the core, um, and then at the end, the sand is removed. So cool, isn't it? Just like that. That's 1,500 degrees molten iron poured in just like that. It's like fireworks. Ran on the parts while sitting here right next to jag parts, other engine parts, all being poured out of the same pot. This is absolutely brilliant. Yep. When you pour the molten metal in, yep. what happens? How does the air get out? So basically, with the sand, it's got a it is self-venting because we use a grade of sand which is grade porous, 60, it? so it's porous, so it does let, but we also do put vent holes in the mould as well, just to release it. But as you see when we do cast them, you do get a little bit of air come out anyway. So we can pour it in one yeah. end and then at the other end there's yeah, a little normally chimney. like we always had a core in, so we'd scrape a, sometimes scrape a little line in there just to let the air come out. Then yeah. the air gets pushed out yeah. those little holes. Yeah, and that's why sometimes you get a little bit of pressure, a little bit of metal does come out sometimes, yeah. but it's not an issue. So that's been... 20 minutes, half an hour now. Yeah. I'm desperate to have so a look. <laughs> Can we have a look? No. No, that will <laughs> no. still be glowing red. Will it really? Honestly, that would be still glowing red. So really if you open it now, it would end up distorting and that's the problem. Yeah. And also the metal would chill as well, so it make it hard. Oh, so it'll cool too quickly. Correct. So we've got to wait for tomorrow. Really, yeah. Fine. Right. We'll see you in the morning. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of the shot blaster, so the finish on there has all got to be fettled and finished off. So, Dom, whether you want to finish it off yourself, you hey, can. I'll take this away. This is it. First piece of the run on First piece. <laughs> Plenty more to come. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? I cannot stop smiling. It is a brilliant feeling having the first piece of the new Ranola wheeling machines in the back of the van. It just, honestly, what an experience that was, meeting Chris and having a brilliant tour of that foundry. That is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I absolutely loved it. Honestly, when we go back there to film the main body being cast, that is gonna be epic. That is gonna be such a good day. The very first new piece for the Ranola is in the back of the van. And I'm going to go first thing Monday morning and drop it off to the engineer that's going to be doing the machining. It's a good feeling. We're making some progress. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it all made sense. I've really tried my best to explain the pattern making and the core box and that course, the sand core and all of that. And it won't be long. Join me for the next one. Thank you so much. And make sure you subscribe. Tell all your friends. Come along for the journey. Thank you so much. See you later.